Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Aaron Clark. This is my second try with a, a, a video demo of, of some quick painting of old school classic D&D um, &D miniatures straight out of the 70s. I was at a local convention here uh, a few weeks ago, Dundercon, here in the San Francisco Bay Area, and uh, they had a paint and take um, some, and uh, this is a model that I that I that I that I paint and took. <laughs> um, uh, Thirty minute paint job. I set myself to a little challenge um, Saturday morning when I got to the convention to sit down and do some painting, and I was really kind of pleased with the results. It's not a normal style of painting that I do. Uh, a black primered miniature with just very quickly layered uh, paints, but I'm really kind of pleased with the end result. An old RuneQuest, Citadel pre-slaughter RuneQuest troll. Matronly troll of some sort. <clears throat> and a lot of fun to paint. So I set myself to this challenge again to paint another model in, in 30 minutes. And I've got a handful of these old school uh, Gosh, what are they? Dungeon Dwellers, probably, or minifigs, or some such early D&D miniatures uh, from the 70s, or mid-late 70s, I imagine. Kind of just in the heyday, that the, the early days of Dungeons & Dragons, where things were wild and crazy and weird, funky, cool. So, uh, this was the second miniature that I set myself to a 30-minute paint job. Uh, and I'm pretty pleased with its results too. So I thought I'd carry on with this challenge. And I did want us to have a video demo and kind of talk about some of these techniques. This is not a normal style of painting that I that I do. Black primer is not really my friend, uh, but it seems to be working for this kind of technique. So I thought I'd share that with you and maybe invite you to set yourself to that uh, 30 minute challenge paint a model in 30 minutes see how it see what you can do experienced painters inexperienced painters what have you um, so i've got a model here that's been black primered i base my uh, miniatures on a on a single penny could probably use a metal washer too but pennies are pretty prolific around my household and um, a little bit of putty to sort of texture up the base and hide that transition between the the uh, the penny base or the washer base and, and the model itself. Uh, these models were given to me by a buddy named Dave, who knows that I'm into weird old funky metal, weird old funky miniatures, and uh, he had a handful that he just passed along to me. So what better thing to do with them than paint them? Paint them quickly, get them on the table, use them, have them available for those weird, funky D&D games that we might get a chance to play. Uh, so this is some sort of cleric that I'll be painting. And um, I, I mount these, I mount my miniatures when I'm painting individual miniatures on cork to make it a little easier to handle the model so I don't actually have to touch it or, or handle it. Um, with my sticky fingers while I'm painting. A um, little bit easier to do when you have just the base of the model, but that's a little harder to hold even. So just taking a little bit of blue tack or poster tack and sticking it down under the top of a wine bottle cork, just pressing that model on lets me sort of do whatever I need to do with this miniature when I'm going to be painting it. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I've gathered my tools. I've got a pot of water that I'm gonna leave here off the frame, uh, off the camera frame. I've got a palette that I'm gonna be um, dropping my paint into, just so you can see how I work with the paint and the miniature. <clears throat> and I've got my model. I've got a handful of brushes here. A variety of, of sizes and types. I've got a big dry brush. I've got a uh, a smaller dry brush, and I've got a, a variety of different size craft, craft brushes. I think this actually, this might actually even be a sable brush. Um, 
I'm a real fan of the synthetics of the of the craft brushes, the the inexpensive things because painting miniatures is uh, the way I paint miniatures. I, I'm pretty hard on my brushes, and I don't like the idea of spending. 10 15 30 dollars on a sable brush only to kind of destroy it but these do seem to hold up pretty well and uh, uh let's see this this miniature that i painted this wizard i painted with these just these two brushes so um fairly large size brushes and um can get some pretty reasonable results even with a big brush Easier to put paint down, faster to put paint down with the, with the large brush, I think. So, uh, I'll let this guy watch over what's happening with the uh, paint ballot. Maybe I'll cast a magic spell. All right, how are we going to get started? I'm going to get started with some white paint. And when I get started with the white paint, I am going to set a little timer for myself for this this challenge. I know I've been yapping a little bit here before we got started. Oh, the other tool that I have is an old t-shirt, uh, any kind of rag will do, um, paper towel, uh, whatnot. This, this to uh, kind of clean up my hands if I, if I get paint on them or uh, wipe and dry my brushes. So I'm just going to drop a little bit of white paint into my palette. And I'm going to load up my large dry brush. I'll wipe a bit of that paint off. Dry out those bristles just a little bit. Oh, you're casting a spell. And I'm going to do I'm going to do a technique called um, dry brushing. Real lightly, I'm just going to run the bristles over the face of the model here. And what I'm doing is. Um, uh, trying to pick out where some of that detail is of the model and kind of come back to that white primer that I really like to use uh, when I'm when I'm normally painting my, uh, my using my more traditional painting style and, and maybe maybe someday I'll, I'll demo what that painting style looks like too but um, here you can see I'm just sort of lightly running this brush over the model to kind of pick out the detail and learn a little bit more about what's going on with the uh, with the uh, with the sculpting, what the sculptor had in in mind. You can see some pouches here on the belt. And the other thing that's kind of interesting that's happening with this technique, if you're not familiar with it, is I'm picking up all these shadows. Right? And I've got this sh cool shadow in the. In the, in the arm cloak and on the face. Oh shoot, I better start my timer. Hey Siri, uh, set a timer for 20 minutes. Hey Siri, set a timer for 20 minutes. Okay, there we go. All right, there we go, 20 minutes on the clock. That'll give me a little bit of a heads up that, oh no, I'm almost out of time. Better hurry up and finish. So I've got, so what's happened is I've kind of put two primer coats down on this model. And now I'm going to work from the inside of the model out. So I'm going to start with the flesh. I think those are probably trousers there, though they could be his bare naked legs. And I can also see that I've got a little bit, some flash lines here on this model, which I could clean up with the sharp knife if I wanted to, if I really cared to do that. Um, but that's eating into my my 30 minute paint time. So I need a flesh color. Oh, here's a good one. You can see I'm not putting too much paint down on my palette. <clears throat> I don't need that much. It's going to dry out. Oh, and I've got a trick that I'm going to try tonight. I've got this uh, retarder paint retarder, additive for slowing the drying of acrylic paints and mediums. And I'm just going to put a little bit of that in my palette also. This thing's clear and transparent. It's not going to change the color of my pigment. I'm just going to put a little bit in my brush. I'm going to load a little bit into my brush, actually. 
I'm going to really moisten out those bristles um, so that as I'm painting, the paint doesn't have it, an opportunity to really dry on the uh, on the on the brush brush bristles, make it stiff and tacky and hard to apply the paint. So I've got an I've got this, and we normally I do this with water, um, but this style of painting seems to really want to um, dry everything out on the model on the brush. So I'm just loading up paint into my into my brush here. And the same thing, I'm just going to lightly apply it to the model here, kind of in rough areas about where his flesh tones are. And you can see I'm being a little sloppy with the uh, with the paint because I'm going to be able to come back later and cover this these these slopped over areas with other colors and I can be a little more careful then I don't need to be careful now I need to be fast I need to hurry up That's pretty good for some flash. Whoops. Okay, cool. Rinse that brush a little bit. And I'm gonna think about what's next. Oh, probably his, well, let's do his trousers. Let's make those really bright green. Those will stand out. Green. Um, when I'm painting, um, I really like to paint brightly uh, so I can see the miniature at the table. Mm. I mean, I could certainly paint a little more realistically, a little more natural tones, but it's on, on a small model like this, gosh, it's really hard to see. So there's my little bit of green trousers right there, just kind of suggested. It'll do. And when I was looking at this model earlier, I had this idea about wanting to have this sort of white um, turn back of the cloak and in, in, in a darker cloak. So for the cloak. How about no, how about a darker green? This is an interesting color. This is a green satin. <clears throat> Whoops. Might go a little druidy, I guess, if we use this green satin, but maybe not. Let's see what happens. So same thing. I'm just loading up my brush with quite a bit of pigment. I'm not going to wipe. Mo I'm not going to wipe a little bit of it off, but not a lot. <clears throat> I want to carry out tr transfer over that that pigment to the model well this is very translucent maybe that's kind of cool so I'm just going to go in here and lay down a very quick coat or two of this green let some of those highlights and shadows from my primer show through and this might have to do with the fact that maybe the paint's not that well mixed or maybe it's just the type of paint this is. So 
So you can see I'm not really pushing very hard here. I'm not even trying to work the paint into these crevices. I'm kind of letting the, the black primer stick around uh, and create some very quick, instant shadows. And even if I were to kind of mess up here and splash a bit of green onto this, the flesh that I've already laid down, I've got the, um, I've got that, that paint in my palette so I could just come back and rework it. You know, painting, painting miniatures like this, I think, is often about painting in layers. <clears throat> Layering on the paint, layering on the paint, layering on the paint. And then I think I'm going to paint the inside of that cloak, that also that green. I had thought about doing it like the backing of the... Uh, that I'm going to use on these turnbacks here. I thought that might just look weird, so. And you can see my my green my green trousers are getting a little lost in the uh, green there, so I'm just gonna come in here and grab some white and some of this green. Just try to bring that up a little bit. Well, that's quite a bit that I brought it up. Okay. Let's get the, the white off. Maybe just a little bit more. Under this green here. You can see the paint does dry in the model fairly quickly. So I can come back and layer over it after I've gone away and worked on something else, some other area of the model. And again, I'm not touching real hard here, not pressing real hard with the brush. Real light touches and while I'm painting <clears throat> I'm kind of studying the model and thinking about what other colors I might lay down like all oh, that backpack is probably going to be very brown um, I don't know what color I'm going to do his hair um, he's got this onk oh that should maybe be like a black obsidian that would be cool manage it. All right, well, I think that's good enough for the cloak. We probably worked on that cloak for five or ten minutes. Gosh, ten minutes seems like forever in this 30-minute challenge. Okay, I'm going to work on that, um, the turn back here. Got a little bit of an off-white. And I'm going to bring in some of this white that I used for my... Oh, I'm getting some of that green, too. Bring in some of that white that I used in the... Uh, let's bring in a lot of that white. All right, that's probably good. Maybe a little bit too early to work the, uh, the turn back, but I was so excited about it when I had this idea. I'm gonna get started on it right away. I had this idea to like paint in runes or something onto this turn back to sort of help illustrate the fact that this guy is a weird monkey. Cleric, spellcaster, mystic. Sorry, falling a little bit out of the frame. The uh, the I shot a, a first edition of this video with the uh, Red Wizard. And I 
Maybe I had my camera a little too low or I was trying to zoom in or something with the, uh, with the, uh, the camera itself. And it just kept, I kept moving my, my figure out of the frame. I was, it, it, I didn't, I didn't achieve the, uh, intent I had set out to do is, is demo, uh, this style of painting. Okay, well, that's not bad. Think a little bit about what's going to go in his, uh, what his tunic's going to be. And then I think I'll work on the leather for the boots and the backpack. Looking at the model here, I can see like, oh, maybe there's a couple of areas that I want to pick up, but ah, that's all right. It's all just very implied painting. All right, I'm going to cut over to a, a slightly different brush. This one has a little finer point and I can go in and work a little more area and detail and hopefully not slop over into uh, the other areas that I've already painted. Use that brown for, oh, don't forget my, my common stuff. My acrylic retarder. So I'm loading up that brush, pushing the paint into the bristles so it carries when I um, start laying it onto the model. Let's see what happens with this backpack. Oh, that's cool. So you can see I chose a very kind of light, brilliant brown rather than like a deep kind of muddy brown because I really wanted that detail to pop on the backpack. Okay, I got a spelt here. Look at that on the other side. Work in the boots here. Hmm. Oh, that green didn't really carry forward that well into the into the interior of the cloak, but that's fine. That's just creating a shadow. That's cool. I need to go back and rework that. And then I thought I might do an orange for his, uh, an orangish color for his, uh, his tunic, their tunic. And I gotta think about hair.
little slop of the boot there in the, the corner of the, of the cloak. I think it gets hidden enough when the figure is standing, so I'm not going to worry about it. Alright, let's load up that brush with the, um, the orange. And I've mixed kind of a ready orange with a bit more orange to sort of... Um, Bring that down a little bit. I'm used to using this same brush. And I'm kind of using the edge of the point rather than the point itself to sort of run into these areas of the model. He's got some sort of strange pouches or something Whoops, here on his belt. what color those are going to be, but I'm sure we'll find out. Whoops. All right, so remember the nice thing is that I have my colors that I was using earlier already on my palette. And if I had a wet palette, these would be holding up a little bit longer. Maybe I'll demo a wet palette another time, but I just wanted to have a smaller palette that I could show the paint on the, uh, on the video. All right, so we've got, oh, look at this, what's happened with this skin up here from the cloak. getting there. An idea about the hair. Cast your magic spell, wizard. And I'm going to stick with this uh, finer brush. This brush that holds a better point. It's not a finer brush, but a brush that holds a better point than the, than the first one I was using. That's a number one. Number two. Okay, that's my 20 minute timer gone, and I think we're just about done with this model. So let's smash in the hair, and then we'll pick out the details. Hey Siri, set a timer for 10 minutes. So same trick from earlier with the um, with the uh, with the black primer and the white dry brush. I'm starting. To, I'm doing the same kind of trick on the um, on the hair here, letting that black show through in the cracks. Oh yeah, man! Feather that hair, baby. Feather it. It's in elementary school. The pretty blonde girl in the class next door said, Oh, you should feather your hair. No idea. What we're talking about. Couple of chunks of black in there, but I think that 
that's okay. I think that's okay. Some black metallic on that. I don't know if this is going to be the right one, but let's see what's going to happen. So we get some black metallic on those holy symbols. Hmm. This isn't really the black metallic that I wanted. I don't even think I have a black metallic. I guess I could have mixed one, but how many more minutes do I have? Not many. He's got a wristband. Oh, I should have painted like a sweatband. Nothing quite says the 70s like a good old fashioned sweatband. Okay, and I got a little bit of flesh that picked up some white somehow. We'll work in the runes, and I think I'm just going to use this big giant brush and show that you don't need. Well, I don't know if I can demo if I can actually show that that you don't need a very fine pointed brush to do that kind of stuff. A tiny brush is what I mean to say. This one has a pretty good fine point. And then a trick over here. I got a paint mixer, a vortex paint mixer. That thing is the bomb. Load up my brush again with that paint retarder because this is one point that I don't want my paint drying out. All right, that's kind of suggestive of runes, maybe. Oh, that's a cobra. So I'm just using the very tip of the brush here, really, really lightly. I'm not wanting to press too hard at all. And just kind of suggesting the idea that there's something else on this turn back of the cloak. Okay, that's probably too much, but it'll do. Oh, let's uh, 
hit that with a lighter brown. So that's his hair brown. I don't want to do that. Uh, do I have another brown here? No, I do not. So I guess I'm just going to mix these two together a little bit. Oh, give it a little bit of red. close to the uh, too close to the orange so this is gonna get lost I think mm, we'll use the uh, the brown and the hair color maybe that'll work Yeah, and that's kind of the risk here I find for my painting is I don't want to muddy things up and make them too similar. <laughs> I want there to be some delineation, some transition between these two colors. I don't want things to blend together that much. Shoot, slopped over some. those pouches when they're hanging there on the belt. Okay, let's clean up that green. Okay, let's paint in the base. Base, base, base. Do your bases. Ooh, wow, look at that. Got a lot of brown underneath the Oak there. I think I can fix that. Oh, I'd really like to have a bit of red in that um, holy symbol. Really bright and brilliant. Maybe a yellow. All my D&D miniatures are in the dungeon, as they should be, so they get a funky gray base. Alexa, how much time on my timer? Alexa, how much time on my timer? I've just hit the 10 minute mark on the video. So that's done. <laughs> 30 minute paint job. Uh, now I could certainly set this down and okay, there's my timer gone. And uh, yeah, 30 minute paint job, pretty. I'm, I'm pleased, I'm happy. I got another painted model to, 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 to add to my collection, um, to share with my friends, to use in my old school D&D &D games. A funky cleric with the turn back cloak with some hand painted runes. That's pretty cool, right? Well, I think it's pretty cool. So a couple of things. A couple of things I might do is maybe come in and paint the eyes, which I think I'll do, and then put that little drop of of uh red or yellow right there in the center of the holy symbol and I'll do the same there on his on the holy symbol on his chest so let's and my gosh I really hate those pouches but I think they are just what they are
We'll see how much I run over in my 30 minute paint job. I'm not gonna do much more than this. <laughs> Okay, again, I'm loading in my, my, the paint into my, my bristles. I'm working it into those bristles, picking up more paint, and then I'm going to use it to point it into these areas in the holy symbol. That looks pretty good. That, does, that doesn't look bad. Okay, let's do the eye. A little more white. If you think about it, maybe we'll hey, have brown eyes. Okay, so I'm gonna grab some more of that paint retarder because this eyes are, oh my gosh, I suck at painting eyes. But having a moist brush helps a lot. Um, and then not having the paint be too moist because you don't want it to go everywhere when you like run off the brush. Okay, so uh, that's all right. Gonna give him very, uh, give him brown eyes, that same color we used on the backpack. It's the same trick, I'm gonna load up the brush. I'm gonna make sure it's dry, I just rinsed it. Keep the brush dry so that paint doesn't run, run off. Load it up so the point, paint carries through under the point. Real lightly top, tap them. Oops. Yeah, baby. Yeah. You can see that one got a little blobby, but I think um, I think I can't fix that. I think I'll just leave it. I'm in here with a little bit of thin down on the black. Just gonna drop that into his mouth. Wipe that off a little bit more. All right, well, okay, funky, funky cleric food wizard, multi-classed, all right. 30 minute paint job, well, 35, I call it 35 minutes. I'm pretty pleased with that. That'll work for my D&D table. And I hope that maybe this expired you to do a little painting yourself. Maybe you haven't picked up in a brush in a while, or maybe you've never painted, or maybe um, you're an experienced painter and you're just looking for, a, for, 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 a, for, for another challenge. And if you do paint a model like this, man, I would love to see it. Um, if you do paint a model in 30 minutes, man, I would love to see it. Heck, if you paint any models, I'd love to see them. Um, give me a shout. All right. There you got it. <laughs>